Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Clowns in Cyberspace. In this video I am going to be showing you the process of how I made Hopscotch the Circus Clown, a costume I made out of scrap fabric. I don't know if anyone else has this issue, but I always end up with so much scrap fabric left over from projects I'm working on. The scraps that I'm left with are definitely way too big to get rid of, but also too small to make anything substantial out of. Anyways, I decided I would knock down the scrap fabric taking up all the space in my fabric closet by making a costume entirely out of those scraps. I've attempted to do this in the past while making the Curlia costume that was largely made out of lining fabric from the Nanette costume, and also with the pig costume I made that was made from miscellaneous scrap fabric I had lying around for a long time. But, in both of these instances, those costumes ended up using additional fabric to finish them off. So, I went through my scrap fabric and it turned out I had a lot of yellow fabric. I think it was all left over from the linings of the pastiche costume and the nimbus costume. I also had a lot of pieces of spare quilting cotton that I wanted to get rid of as well. So, let's get started! I figured what would allow me to use up the most fabric possible would be to make the poofiest costume possible. So, I figured making a classic looking circus clown with a huge poofy onesie would be the best option. To draft the pattern for this costume, I took the pattern I previously made for the Nimbus costume and combined the frock and poofy pants into one piece. The pattern consists of a top yoke section and then a series of tapered panels that connect to pant legs at the bottom. Once I had cut out and sewn all of those pieces together, I ended up with the main body portion of the costume. To hide all of the raw edges, I added a lining layer on the inside of the costume with some other scrap fabric I had. And then I ended up with something like this. Very poofy and very promising so far. After adding a zipper to the front to close it up, I switched my machine over to the longest stitch length possible so that I could gather the fabric for the sleeves. Okay, and now on to my favorite part of the process, making the mask. I start out with um, creating a layer of plaster on top of a replica of my head, which makes the process a lot easier. And then on top of that plaster layer, I build up the face using polymer clay. Once I've finished building up the plaster layer, I go around all the edges with additional strips of plaster to fortify them and prevent them from fraying and snapping off. Once the plaster layer is finished drawing, which usually takes overnight, I begin applying the polymer clay on top of it. I like to start with the nose area because I find that the polymer clay itself adheres better to the nose because there's more, I guess, material to cling on to. So it's easier to start there and then work your way around towards the perimeter of the mask later on. Um, but I do start with the nose and make sure that it's all smoothed out and everything is secure and then I'll build up the rest of it afterward. This part of the process requires a lot of trial and error. I spend a lot of time applying the polymer clay and then ripping it off because I don't like the way it looked and then trying again. But eventually I achieve a look that I think I'm satisfied with towards the end. And I also never usually like the mask until I've painted it. I think it looks weird when it's just totally white. Um, but eventually I get there.
It's really important for me in this stage to make sure that the polymer clay is as smooth as possible before I cook it in the oven because those uh, blemishes become a lot more difficult to fix once the polymer clay is hardened. So I spend a lot of time smoothing out the skin as much as I possibly can before then. And once I am satisfied with the way the mask looks like, I pop it in the oven at 275 degrees for about an hour or so. I find that the longer you cook the mask, the harder it ends up becoming later on. Um, obviously don't cook it forever, but um, I usually feel like an hour or so is a pretty good amount of time to make it sure it's super, super hard. And once it's out of the oven and it's completely cooled off, I take it outside to sand it down to make sure it's super, super smooth. Um, and believe it or not, this footage isn't even sped up. I'm just really that quick at it. I make sure the entire mask is completely sanded before I add the eyelashes because in the past I've added the eyelashes before I've sanded it and I always end up bumping them and snapping them off. So I do it beforehand. And now here I am applying a few layers of gesso to the mask to smooth out the skin even more and also prime the surface for when I paint it. And once the gesso is applied and I've been able to sand it, I then go ahead and start to make the eyelashes. I used to make the eyelashes for the clowns out of polymer clay, but that never worked out because they would always snap off and be really brittle. So I started to use epoxy sculpt for them. Uh, it's a two-part epoxy clay that dries chemically into a really, really strong uh, surface, which prevents the eyelashes from breaking as often, which I really like. Um, so I basically just mix uh, equal parts of the two parts together and I get um, the clay. So basically I just cut little triangles out of the epoxy sculpt. Uh, I try to make the triangles relatively thick, again to prevent uh, them from snapping off later. And I put usually four eyelashes per eye, so eight in total. And once I have that finished, then I go on to attaching them to the mask. And to do that, I put a little piece of epoxy sculpt down on the lash line of the mask so that I have a surface to build the eyelashes up on top of. And I smooth it out with some water to make sure it's nice and smooth and seamless with the skin. And then I just place the eyelashes on. This part can be pretty finicky, so it uh, requires uh, a lot of care and a lot of attention to detail because, again, once they dry, you can't really change them, so you want to make sure they're in the right position before it's too late. And once the eyelashes are good to go, I begin painting the mask with chalk pastels and a little makeup brush. This is the design for the face that I'm going for. I want it to have really rosy cheeks and a really bright, warm smile.
I wanted this clown to have a bright red nose to really look like a classic circus clown so I've masked off an area of the face and went in a lot with the red chalk pastels to make the nose super super red and super super distinct and then here I am peeling off that masking tape and you can see that the area around it was protected. And then I go in with a kneaded eraser to clean up the edges and lift off any extra pigment that uh, fell around. And then here I am sealing that base layer in with uh, a spray sealant before I go back over everything with more detail. I do quite a few layers of spray sealant just to make sure that none of that base blushing will get ruined at all while I'm going in over top with more detail. And then once the blushing is sealed in, I do the eyebrows and eyelids and eyelashes after that. And once I was finished with the eyebrows, I gave the clown some nice bright yellow eyeshadow to match the costume. And then once all of the face details are done, I go in with acrylic paint to paint the eyelashes black. The headpiece for the costume is the same as all the other headpieces I've made for all the other costumes. They begin with the same uh, five or so pattern pieces that I then modify and add details to later to distinguish it from the other costumes. Since the quilting cotton I'm using to make the headpiece is quite thin, I'm adding a layer of muslin uh, underneath it to stiffen the fabric up so that it will keep its shape while I'm wearing it better. And once all those pattern pieces are sewn together, this is what the base headpiece looks like before I add any de decorations to it. Um, for this uh, character, I want to add two blue earmuffs to the side and a big cone hat on top. And now it's time to move on to adding the details to the headpiece. I started out by sewing on two earmuffs to either side of the head part. This part can take a while, so I was doing it while I watched TV on the couch. Um, after they were attached, I stuffed them with some polyfill to make them nice and poofy. And then I went ahead and made a really tall pointy hat for the top of my head. And once the main costume was finished, I still had a bunch of fabric left over. 
So I decided to make a pair of matching shoes for this costume. Um, and if you wanted to see more in depth on how I draft the pattern and make the matching shoes for my costumes, I do have a detailed video on my Patreon that you guys can check out. And here is the costume all finished. I am really thrilled with the way it turned out. I am happy that I was able to rid my fabric closet of some extra fabric taking up all that space. And I think that I'm going to go ahead and look for more scrap fabric in my closet to do this again. So if you're interested in seeing that happen once again, or interested in following along with any of my sewing projects, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, or even subscribe to my Patreon if you feel like it. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.